All right, it's time to get ready for our unit four test. Uh, number one is a word problem where Justin is um, practicing shooting. Um, it says that the ski is shot from a height of two meters. And so it's shot from a height of two meters um, off the ground. And then it follows a, a parabolic curve. And it's got some points for us, which we'll use those points. And then he fires his gun about one meter off the ground. So here's where his gun fires from and he tries to hit hit it at a certain point. We don't know exactly where it's hit, but his bullet is gonna fire with a linear um, function. And so uh, we wanna formulate the equations, then we also will solve this one. So we've got uh, the ski, it starts at two, so we've got zero, two. After two seconds, it's now 46, so we've got two, 46, and then six seconds, 14, so six, 14. And I'll plug those into the calculator to find the equation. And so we're gonna go into our stat, go edit, and we'll put these in, zero, two, and six, uh, two, 46, and 14. We'll go back to stat, go to calc, and we wanna do the quad reg to find the quadratic function. That goes through those three points. There's my A, my B, and my C. And so it's Y equals negative five X squared plus 32 X plus two. Uh, next off for the bullet, the bullet is starting one meter off the ground and it's traveling at a, thir at a rate of 31.5 meters per second. And so there's my equation for the bullet. And so we want to know where do these two intersect. And so we're going to put them in our calculator and our y equals, uh, we'll put in negative 5x squared plus 32x plus 2. And for our other one, 1 plus 31.5x. There's our two y equals. If I press graph, I don't see a whole lot. Uh, but I do see that I, it's not going to take too long as far as my time. So we're going to need to adjust our window. So we're going to go into our window. As far as our x min goes, our x's represent a uh, number of seconds. And so we shouldn't have a negative second. So we're going to put in 0 for our min. x max, it looked like 10 was enough, so I'm going to leave it at 10. Our y min, um, it shouldn't go below the ground, so I'm going to have zero. Um, but our y max, uh, our highest point that we have is 46. I'll go a little bit higher than 46, and we'll go up to 50 and see how that looks. Uh, but this, this is a gun firing, and so it shouldn't take too long for the, the bullet to hit. And so there's our intersection pretty quick. And so let's go ahead and press second trace, five, enter, enter, enter. And there's our intersection right there. And so our intersection is 0.5. 16.75 and so that 0.5 represents how long it will take so that's the time uh, in seconds and then the 16.75 uh, that's the height off the ground and this one is meters and so it's meters um, high uh, next one number two we've got a baseball um, same sort of situation though uh, we want to find where they intersect um, and this one already gives us the two equations as well. Um, and so we just want to know, uh, will the paintball hit the baseball? And if so, when will it hit? So in our y equals, we'll put in negative 5x squared plus, we'll change that to 20, and then plus 15. And for my y2, we'll change it to 3x plus 3. And I'm gonna go ahead and modify the window before we go in. So in my window, again, I shouldn't have a negative distance. We're throwing it, so hopefully we don't throw it behind us. Uh, but for our X max, uh, again, we're shooting a gun at it. I'm, I'm gonna try and leave 10. We'll see how that looks. Uh, my Y min, zero, but my Y max, um, he starts at a height of 15, and it's just gonna go up from there. Um, so we'll go a little bit higher than 15. Let's go 30 and see how this looks. So I definitely didn't go high enough. Uh, but I can see the intersection, so we're good. So does he hit it? Yes, there is an intersection right there. And so if yes, when will it hit and at what height? So we want to know both. And so second trace five, enter, enter, enter. And so it's going to hit after four seconds. And the height is 15. Let's see, what's our meters? 15 meters. All right, number three. Uh, number three, you want to get both of them in y equals. These are both in y equals. Set them equal to each other. x squared plus 2x plus 4 is equal to x plus 1. And then we'll solve. 
And so we're going to move this x over with subtraction so it becomes plus 1x. Let's move that one over with subtraction. Uh, so plus 3 equals 0. And then if I could, I would try to factor this, but nothing multiplies a 3 and adds a 1. So we're going to go to the quadratic formula. So negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3 all over 2a. Um, this becomes 12, so it's 1 minus 12, which is negative 11. Um, and so you can't have a negative under the square root, so this is a no solution. Um, if you wanted to find the imaginary, we would take out the i and put it over 2. So both of these are correct. It is a no solution, um, and so it's imaginary, and there it is right there. Uh, number 4, we want to get y by itself first, so we're going to have uh, y equals, all these signs will change, negative x squared plus 3x and then plus 20. I want to get the y by itself, so I'm going to actually move the y over. I'll move the 4 over, so x minus 4. And now we'll set these equal to each other. So x minus 4 is equal to negative x squared plus 3x plus 20. Um, I always like to have my a positive, so I'm going to move everything from over here to over here. So it's going to become a positive x squared. We're going to subtract 3x, so negative 2x. We'll subtract 20, so negative 24 is equal to 0. And so on this one, we're going to have negative 24 on top, negative 2 on bottom. Um, it looks like 6 and 4 would work. Negative 6, positive 4. We're dividing by 1. And so we get x minus 6 and x plus 4. So x equals 6 and x equals negative 4. So those are our x values. And then we're going to solve for the y by plugging these x values into the linear equation. That's always easier. So if I plug in 6, 6 minus 4 is 2. If I plug in negative 4, negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. And those are my two solutions. All right, number 5, it just wants to know what is the equation going through these points. So this is where we're going to do um, our stat edit. And we'll input all these values. So negative 4, 2, 8. Um, negative 65, negative 17, and negative 185. And go back into STAT, go over to the fifth option. And so y equals negative 3x squared plus 2x minus 9. That's my answer. Same thing on the next one, STAT. So we have negative 1, 3, and 8. 47, 91, and 551. Stat count. And so y equals 9x squared minus 7x uh, plus 31. <coughs> right, we want to find the vertex. We do that by doing negative b over 2a for the x value and then plug it in for the y value. And so we're going to have negative 8 over 2 times 2 is 4, which is negative 2. And now we're going to plug in this negative 2. So 2, negative 2 squared, plus 8, negative 2, plus 21. Uh, you could work this out just by itself uh, in your head, or you could just plug it in your calculator. Either one's going to get the same answer. Uh, make sure if you put in your calculator that negative 2 goes inside the parentheses, uh, squared on the outside, um, plus 8 times negative 2, plus 21, and we get 13. If you did it by hand, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. That's going to be negative 16 plus 21. Uh, that becomes negative 8 plus 21, which also is 13. Either way, it's going to get the same answer, or it should. Um, so same thing on this one. Find the vertex. We're on negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. And we'll plug that in. So negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 plus 12. So that becomes 4 minus 8 plus 12, so negative 4 plus 12, which is 8. Uh, number 9, uh, it says which of the following points are solutions. Um, so it could be multiple answers. Uh, we need to plug in and, and check all of these. Um, so for letter A, we're just going to plug it in. And so we're going to have negative 8 is less than or equal to negative 3, um, 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 1. So we're just plugging in 2 for x. And so we get negative 8 is less than or equal to, and I'll just put this in the calculator, and it'll make it easier for the future whenever I plug in those.
I get negative 9. Is negative 8 less than or equal to negative 9? Um, no, negative 8 is greater, and so that is not a, a solution. So now we'll try the next one. Uh, I'll plug in negative 7 for my y, and we're going to plug in 0 for x, which that makes it real easy. All those cancel out, we're just left with negative 1. So is negative 7 less than or equal to negative 1? Yes. B is a solution. Next one, we'll plug in negative 2 for y. Negative 3, uh, 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 1. And so here's how I said it was going to be easier. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste, and then we're going to change all our x's from 2 to 1. So we get negative 2 is less than or equal to negative 2. Uh, less than or equal to, these are equal, so that is a solution as well. And then we'll try our last one. Uh, negative 33 is less than or equal to negative 3. Uh, this one we have negative 3 squared plus 2 times negative 3 minus 1. All right, so on this one, I'll just copy and paste again. But on this one, we're putting in two things. And so I'm going to need to put in the negative. But then if I put in the 3, it overwrites the parentheses. So this INS up here is insert. We're going to do second insert. We'll put in that 3, and it won't delete it. So we get negative 33 is less than or equal to uh, negative 34. And you could look at this and be like, oh, 33 is less than 34, but these are negative. Negative 33 is actually greater than, not less than negative 34. So D is not an answer. So just B and C are my correct answers to number 9. All right, number 10. Uh, we're going to graph this inequality. So we're going to start at our transformation. This one's going to go down 3. And it's also going to reflect over the x-axis because of that negative in the front. So we're going to start at 1, 2, 3 right here. And then that negative, instead of going over 1 and up 1, we're going to go down 1 because of the reflection. Over 2, down 4. And if you needed to, you could put in your calculator, see what it looks like. Um, this one does not have the equal, so this one's going to be a dotted parabola. And it says greater than, so we're going to go everything above the vertex, which is outside the parabola. If you're wanting to check your work, you can do it in your calculator. Um, so I'll put in negative x squared uh, minus 3. And we're going to change the shading, though, to be greater than. So there's my greater than right there. And now we'll graph this. And that does look like the graph that I made. And so you can check your work in your calculator as well. Uh, number 11, I'm just going to distribute and then combine like terms. So we get 20i minus 8i squared minus 18 minus 3i, and then the minus 12 is just by itself at the back. Uh, i squared, anytime you see i squared, that's equivalent to negative 1, which changes the sign of the negative 8 to become positive 8. And now we'll combine like terms. So 8, negative 18, and negative 12. If you need help, just put in the calculator. So 8 minus 18 minus 12 is negative 22. And then, so I'm done with my regulars. And then 20i minus 3i is 17i. All right, solving for x, um, I would have what multiplies to 12 and adds to negative 3. I can't think of anything. So we're going to have to do quadratic formula. Mm -hmm. And so 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared is 9 mm -hmm. minus 4 times 2 times 6 all over 2 times 2, which is 4. So I'm going to simplify underneath the square root first. So 9 minus 4 times 2 times 6 uh, gets negative 39. And so this is a no solution, which is imaginary. So I'll come out to the side. Negative 39 uh, goes down to um, 3 and 13, which doesn't go any further. So it's going to stay at the 39. But anytime you have a negative, you're always going to pull out the i. So 3 plus or minus i, square root of 39, all over 4. That's my final answer. These are my two imaginary solutions right here. Number 13, uh, I would have what multiplies a 6 and adds a negative 4. 3 and 2 doesn't work. 6 1 doesn't work. Doesn't work again. So 4 plus or minus square root of 16 minus 4 times 3 times 2, all over 2 times 3, which is 6. So again, I'll simplify underneath the square root, that discriminant. Uh, 16 minus 4 times 3 times 2 uh, gets negative 8. 
So the square root of negative 8, we're definitely going to pull out the i, but then we have 2 and 4, 2 and 2. So we've got a pair of 2s. And so we have 4 plus or minus. The pair of 2s come out with the i. This lone 2 stays on the inside all over 6. And then we'll see, can we simplify these three numbers? We're not going to simplify the number inside the square root, uh, but I can divide all these by 2. So it becomes 2 plus or minus 1i square root of 2 over 3. Uh, number 14, <coughs> a linear and quadratic system can either have uh, one solution, two solutions, or no solutions. One, two, or zero. All right, on number 15, this one never hits. This asks how many solutions there are. This one never hits the x-axis, so it's no solutions, uh, which another way of saying that is two imaginary roots. It's got two imaginary roots. It never touches the x-axis. It's a two because we have the plus or minus square root inside the quadratic formula. So it's two imaginary roots. Uh, this one touches at one point, so this is one root. Uh, this one touches at two places, so it's two roots. And then the rest of the paper is all factoring, and so you have to know how to factor. Uh, on this one, we want to know what multiplies the negative 6 and adds to 5. And so that's going to be a positive 6 and negative 1. That works. Divide by 2. So it becomes 3 over 1. And so the bottom number is attached to your x, and the top number is the factor with it. So x plus 3 and 2x minus 1. And you can always check your answer. x times 2x is 2x squared. Uh, we have negative 3 in the back. And that's positive 6x minus 1x, 5x. It works. 17, we're going to take out a 2 first. And then we're going to see, can I do difference of squares on this? The square root of 16x squared is 4x. The square root of 1 is 1. So yes, I can do the difference of squared. 4x plus 1, 4x minus 1. And we're going to stick that 2 in the front. Number 18, we'll take out 3x. And we're left with x plus 8. Doesn't go further than that. Number 19, I always want my a to be positive. Since it's not, I'm going to take out a negative. There's nothing else in common, so just negative 1. Um, so that becomes 5x squared minus 8x plus 3. And so now I'm going to have 15 on top and negative 8 on bottom. So since it's multiplying to a positive, they're either both positive or both negative. In this case, both negative, negative 5 and negative 3, dividing by my a of 5. So I'm going to put my negative in front. Then I've got x minus 1 and 5x minus 3. All right, on this one, I can definitely take out a 4. So I've got x squared minus 2x minus 8. And so it definitely makes your life easier if you GCF first. And then we're going to have what multiplies the negative 8 and adds the negative 2. And it's going to be negative 4 and positive 2. We're dividing by 1. So we're going to have this 4 on the outside, x minus 4, x plus 2. Then last one, no GCF, so we have got negative 12 on top, 11 on bottom, and so it's 12 and negative 1 dividing by 4. And so x plus 3 and 4x minus 1. All right, and that's it. Hope you are ready for this test.